Hello everyone, my name is Matt Scorpion, and it's time to get in the usual spiel for the last week of a season. So as usual, Bungie has been warning this in the TWABs and the like, but essentially every vendor that isn't seasonal, aka every vendor that isn't in the helm, pretty much everyone in the tower, Banshee, Shax, Zavala, Drifter, everyone in the tower that has any sort of rank up reputation system, be sure to clear them out because otherwise they will just be deleted on season reset. On that same note as well, just because of the seasonal rotation, there will be a few things being implemented. The reset will you be at this usual time. Of course, there'll probably be an update or something, so keep an eye out for that. But aside from that, the usual last week of a season is active. If you don't know how that works, basically all three ritual rotations, the strikes, the gambit, and the crucible playlists are all boosted. I do not think we will get a trials booster, although if we do, I wouldn't be surprised at the same time. But pretty much everything is rank boosted in case you wanted to grind last second ranks in Destiny just to make sure that you finish it up before the season ends. Now, getting into the main beef and potato of everything else, basically just uh, expect it to rotate. So, of course, we have a few things going about. So, Derek, I don't know where I'm going to start here. Actually, no, I think I'm going to start at the usual spot. Uh, highest Battleground Moon, I believe, is the highest Battleground currently available. Now, I will double check my facts, but the weapon available is currently the Braytech Osprey. Now, at this point of the season, this is something I'm going to also just recall. The basic rotations are happening at the same time. At this point, I'm pretty sure everything that is rotating out is no longer attainable. So just keep an eye on that in terms of Nightfalls and everything else. But getting back in the rotation, like I said, Braytech Osprey is currently the reward, and the Grandmaster is the Moon Heist Battleground, actually, now that I talk about it. The hardest part of this is honestly that room halfway between. The boss isn't so terrible, but if you actually want to go for it, it is a pretty much challenging one to go for. On the note of modifiers, you have all three elemental shields. Of course, boosted rank, barrier, and unstoppable champions dealing with lots of scorn and hive. Then you also have void threat for incoming void damage being increased. Grandmaster modifiers are the usual variety. Fire pit for acolyte spawning fire pulls on defeat. Shaft for no radar, as well as the seasonal overcharge, strand, and solar surge, as well as overcharge sniper rifle to make things easier for you. Nothing new gambit wise, and for crucible for our last rotations, we have mayhem for our rotator and zone control, as well for our relentless. Now, Keep in mind, this tab is going to be changing next season as well, for, so just keep an eye out for that. And Iron Banner, of course, descended. We won't be getting Iron Banner again until next season, so if you missed out on that, unfortunately, you missed out on that. And with that, going into Crota's end for current challenge is Precarious Balance, which is Bridge Encounter. Basically, you have to nah, or what's the word? Just to keep this normal, how would I say this? The last person across has to be, or the first person, or... Yeah, words. Anytime somebody is crossing, they have to be on the middle plate with nobody else there, basically to ensure that the bridge starts falling as soon as they go across. And of course, in Master Mode, you have Discipline, Focused Armor, as well as Strand, Solar, and Overcharged Fusion Rifles. So, Oversoul will hopefully have an easier time doing their job. And on that note as well, getting to everything else, for our rotation weekly raid, it is currently the Root of Nightmares, which means Master Mode Root of Nightmares is back, and it is giving Intellect Focused Armor. And on top of that, of course, all Challenge Modes are active, same overcharges with Strand and Solar Surge, but with Overcharge Shotgun instead. And on the same note, obviously, every Adept is available if you wish to go for it. Otherwise, uh, just go ahead and collect your Red Borders while you can, or maybe get Conditional Finality in case it still hasn't dropped. And then for our farming dungeon, it is currently Spire of the Watcher, which has a pretty nifty exotic and some kind of good weaponry, although this one is also not the greatest artifice armor form. So if you're genuinely wanting artifice armor, go for it, but I would genuinely wait for Grasp of Avarice if you wanted to farm it out and get the perfect rolls, if you understand what I'm saying. And then in terms of our raids throughout the week, now expect Dream Dreaming City's Last Wish to be up there for the next one, which might be seasonally relevant, but who knows. We also have the Witch Witch Challenge for Last Wish. For Garden of Salvation, we currently have the 0 to 100 Challenge, which is Final Boss Challenge. Then for Europa, just skipping over to everything, Year 4. We currently have copies of Copies Atrax Challenge, Second Encounter Challenge, and then for our Velta Glass and King's Fall, we have Out of Its Way Challenge, which I believe is Templar, and then King's Fall for Devious Thievery, which I believe is either... No, it's not Floor's Lava. I believe this is War Priest. I have to remember, though. And then Vox Obscura, uh, in case you wanted to know, is, of course, the Rotation Weekly Raid, or Exotic Mission, excuse me. 
that is basically everything in Season 16 and anything to do with the Crafted Dead Messenger, even though that is something to definitely ignore and pretend never existed. And then to wrap everything up for the Raid Rotations Vile Disciple is Looping Catalyst Rolk Challenge. Pretty easy one, basically don't mess up the encounter. And from that point, like I said, no new seasonal things. I doubt we're getting anything new that isn't something related to basically just the next season stuffs, aside from what we've been hearing in the TWAP. So like I said, these challenges are done. Uh, some of these aren't able to be done now, depending on if you miss anything like Iron Banner, no longer here, that sort of thing and variety of other modes and everything else so if you didn't complete it and you don't have anything you can you unfortunately missed out on the large bright dust pile aside from that as well there is obviously a change going to be coming next season now if you are still on the pinnacle or the power grind somehow basically everything that's pinnacle from this season will no longer be pinnacle it will rather be powerful and then that will transport to next season's seasonal loop whatever that may be but on that same note as well, that is pretty much everything throughout the world. Now, there is one last thing to check, and that is, of course, Derek's of Eternity. If you want to wrap up anything of that note before the end of next season, Legendary Farming Mode this week being Fallen, Hive, and Zydron for its rotation. Not sure if they're any harder than the others, but there you go. Now, just to get a midway point before we get out of things, Eververse. So, going into Eververse, we have a few things. Now, like I said, last week, essentially just a warning. Anything in the seasonal offerings tab that's specifically from this season, bundles or anything the like, if you wanted to get it immediately for silver, now is the last week to do it and do it at any point in this week. As soon as the season actually ends, everything in the seasonal offerings will go into the archive, will actually go into a vault and won't be into the archive until the first season of Final Shape, two seasons later. So yeah. If you want anything to make sure you can get it, get it now. Otherwise, it will go into the random bright dust rotation and you'll just have to get some stuff by chance. And chance is always possible to never bring it back up again. On that note, for bright dust on the front page, we have first light from Season of Opulence, which is very watermelony. It's unique. It's, I mean, it doesn't look half bad, but it's also weird, if that makes sense. And then we have another Shaper Gamekeeper new to this season, which... Man, it doesn't look anything like its, <laughs> its profile photo suggests. Then again, uh, the Beatles set might just be a little bit awkward. And then we also have the Crystalline Breakout, which I believe this is a Nezirak spawn in of anything. That's actually pretty nifty. And then we also have the Lord of the Hunt ornament for Point of the Stag. If you either have the old version or manage to get one of the new rolls of Point of the Stag, this is the ornament that's available for it. Uh, can't vouch for whether or not it looks good considering it essentially just adds tree branches to it. And then we also have DIY Forge Master, which this is the building Telesto to say it's a good gun. Which Telesto being Telesto, obviously it's do, do it yourself anyway. And then uh, you got a Telesto. May it break the game at your leisure. And then for the main brighter store, going through Shaders and Transmats, 44 Steel from Season of the Outlaw or Season Forsaken. It's one of those ones that almost always looks good, but at the same time, it's obviously a simple look to it if you understand what i mean and then we also have grayscale undergrowth which is basically another blech one it's very stony and then we also have amethyst bloom which is one of those ones that makes your eyes hurt because it is all of the bright colors in all of the shine and then we also have War wayfarers guys which is one of those ones that is another green shader that just genuinely looks like a forest so you are i guess a wayfarer and then for Transmats, we have the Vex Arrival from Base Game, the Celebration Newness from Season 3, Bunch of Fireworks, and the Jade Coin Effects from Season of the Drifter, which, of course, breaking out of his Jade Coin. And for our main ticket items, we have the Weekday Dance, which this one is an RGB one. I'm not sure, of course, what the reference is because of all the pop culture things I'm into, dance is not one of them. But then we also have the Show the Rings emote, which I guess uh, it's hard to get the reference because it's removing earrings and then going to a street fighter stance i would say it's like a street fighter thing but then the quotes makes me think it's a sonic the hedgehog thing but i honestly don't know and then we have a list of exotic ornaments available for all the classes we have the efficient purist which is the swarmers which is basically a i guess neo Muna style casual look for swarmers but if you actually go to your other characters and i did take a look beforehand this time you have the of one I can always forget to pronounce, basically the 
Europa look for the grapple woven male exotic on hunters and then you also have the one for armamentarium on titans this week like i said if you want any of them be sure to get bright dust while you can otherwise it'll be a long while until they're available for bright dust again now on that note we also have the exoplanet harvester which is a ship a part of a set that we've been seeing in and out of the store basically a earth excavator destiny 2 style set which i'm not gonna lie this is an interesting looking one i wish this was usable in game and then we also have lucent seeker which is basically a part of the moth set that we saw very early in the season little bits here and there but of course with the go fast update coming this is one of those sparrows that i imagine i'll see a few people on just because i love the little cheapy moths and then for hierarchy of needs a clovis bray style um rasputin look which i'm not gonna lie while the color pattern might not be approved, I kind of like its model over hierarchy. Like, if I had original hierarchy with this model, as opposed to this color, I might actually like it enough to maybe grind out the red display. And always lastly, we have a first projection, but obviously always the last one. Then we also have Lodge Rock City, which is a genetic high-impact auto rifle. 